Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm instructor Jim Pytel. Today's topic of discussion is pneumatic compressors. Our objective is to discuss pneumatic compressors and compressor control on an extremely introductory level. As you are no doubt aware, compressors and pneumatic systems are analogous to pumps and hydraulic systems and that they are mechanical power to fluid power converters driven by a prime mover. Like hydraulic pumps, there are numerous types of pneumatic compressors and different means of control. In the interest of forward progress, today's lecture is a rapid overview of these topics. More detailed lectures on individual compressor types and control schemes may be warranted in mechanics and industrial control classes. Compressors are divided into two general families, dynamic and positive displacement. Dynamic compressors, like turbines or centrifugal compressors, are not within the scope of this particular lecture and will limit our discussion to positive displacement compressors. Within the positive displacement branch, there are countless variations and sub-variations you might encounter in the field. However, the main types are reciprocating piston-style compressors and rotating vane and screw type compressors. Occasionally, one may encounter scroll style compressors, which may or not be considered rotary depending on design. Let's take a quick look at these four types of compressors, starting with a reciprocating piston style compressor. As the name implies, a reciprocating piston style compressor makes use of a piston that goes up and down i.e. reciprocates inside a cylinder barrel. Inlet and outlet valves selectively open and close such that air is drawn in from the environment on a downstroke and compressed and expelled into the pneumatic system on an upstroke. Consider this simplified diagram of a reciprocating piston style compressor, including the prime mover shaft, the crankshaft and connecting rod, a piston, and an inlet valve from the environment on the left, and an outlet valve to the pneumatic system on the right. Two phases define a reciprocating piston style compressor, suction and compression, both of which can be described using Boyle's law which you remember correctly is expressed as P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. A lot of times, Boyle's law in pneumatic systems is applied to the act of compression, a reduction in volume, where if you reduce volume, pressure increases. Boyle's law also works in reverse. If you increase volume, pressure decreases. Let's examine the suction phase first. The crankshaft and connector rod translates the rotational movement of the prime mover shaft into the vertical linear movement, drawing the piston down. During the downstroke, the inlet valve on the left remains open and the outlet valve on the right remains closed. As the piston descends, volume in the barrel increases and pressure decreases. Given we started at atmospheric conditions, any increase in volume and consequent reduction in pressure makes the expanding cylinder a vacuum or less than atmospheric condition. Via the open inlet valve, environmental air outside the cylinder at atmospheric pressure is pushed into the less than atmospheric cylinder. The suction phase ends and the inlet valve closes. The upstroke or compression phase is essentially the same, only in reverse. The crankshaft and connector rod translates the rotational movement of the prime mover shaft into upwards linear vertical movement, pushing the piston up. During a majority of the upstroke, both the inlet valve and outlet valve remain closed. As the piston ascends, volume in the barrel decreases and pressure increases. At a certain point, the outlet valve opens and expels the compressed air into the pneumatic system. Compression phase ends, the outlet valve closes, and the inlet valve opens, ready to begin another suction phase. What I've described is the operation of a single stage reciprocating piston style compressor. While single stage compressors do exist, it's often more efficient to perform compression using more than one stage. Consider a two stage reciprocating piston style compressor driven by the same shaft. While the primary cylinder is in the compression stage with an open outlet, the secondary cylinder is in the suction phase with an open inlet. Previously compressed air from the primary cylinder is drawn into the secondary. The other half of the cycle, the cylinder switch rolls and the valves change states. The inlet in the primary opens and the outlet closes as the primary piston descends. The inlet in the secondary closes and the outlet opens as the secondary piston rises. The primary cylinder is in the suction phase, pulling in more air from the environment, while the secondary cylinder is in the compression phase, expelling the doubly compressed air into the pneumatic system. The process then repeats itself over and over. In this fashion, the primary cylinder sucks up environmental air, performs initial compression, hands it off to the secondary cylinder, which again sucks it up, further compresses it, and expels it into the pneumatic system. Those individuals with a solid grasp of the combined gas laws will note that this reduction in volume and consequent increase in pressure will undoubtedly result in a temperature rise. It is for this reason a multi-stage reciprocating piston-style compressor might include an intercooler between stages that cools the compressed air of the first stage before it enters the second. Intercoolers allows this compression-induced heat rise of the first stage to be dissipated, 
thus increasing the efficiency of the second stage in the larger system. At a minimum, even those reciprocating piston stock compressors lacking intercoolers often include cooling fins in the pistons for this purpose. Let's now take a brief look at rotary vein compressors, which behave almost identical to a hydraulic vein pump. You'll recall a vein pump consists of an off-center rotor with sliding veins inside a cam ring. Vein compressors are no different. As the off-center rotor rotates inside the stationary cam ring, the sliding veins create an expanding space on the inlet side, creating a suction action which pulls in environmental air. As the off-center rotor continues to turn, it seals off the entrapped air, reduces in volume, thus compressing the entrapped air and expelling it through the outlet port. The third type of common compressor is the rotary screw compressor, which is a little difficult to illustrate using simplistic diagrams, so rather than learning how to use computer graphics software, I just stole these publicly available images from Wikipedia. A rotary screw compressor consists of a closely mated male and female screw, where the thread spirals the length like a coil of DNA. As the intermeshed spiral rotors turn, they form chambers within the thread in the casing walls, enclosed by the circumferential edge of the spiral. As the individual chambers move from inlet to outlet, volume is reduced, compressing the gas and expelling it into the pneumatic system. Similarly, a scroll compressor is out of my artistic league, so I absconded with these publicly available images illustrating their operation. A scroll compressor uses two interleaving scrolls to compress air. Depending on design and how you look at it, a scroll compressor may or may not be considered a truly rotary device, since some designs utilize a fixed scroll while the other orbits eccentrically without rotating, thereby trapping and compressing pockets of air between the scrolls. An entirely different design uses synchronized co-rotating scrolls, but with offset centers of rotation, where the relative motion is the same as if one were orbiting. An apt analogy I once heard used to describe a scroll compressor is squeezing a tube of toothpaste only the tube is not flat, it's a spiral. As interleaving scrolls inevitably draw together, they squeeze and compress the entrapped air and push it towards the outlet. If we were to extend this analogy to the previously discussed rotary screw compressor, one might envision performing the same squeezing action, only doing so in a helical fashion. 